Go go get soda. Bye. 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 <laughs> this is take two. <laughs> uh, we want to look at Romans chapter eight and start. I want to look at verse two. I want to just talk about um, operating in your spiritual nature, right? Um, and you know, uh, when we're looking at this, when you're talking about spiritual nature, once again, oftentimes people think they hear the word spiritual, they think like supernatural. And spiritual doesn't necessarily mean spiritual, uh, supernatural. It just means uh, the best way I can put it is from the spirit or from from what's real. I think that's a good way of saying the spiritual is to deal with reality, truth. You know what I'm saying? Because <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> like we said earlier, we as human beings have flesh, but that's not who we are. It's the spirit that's who you really are inside. <clears throat> I mean, this flesh perishes, but the, the consciousness that you have is who you really are. That's who you really are. The spirit of you is who you are. That's you. That's Makai. That's just I. That's Rob. You see what I'm saying? And so when he started talking about uh, walking in the spirit, he, instead of the flesh, instead of being carnal, you're thinking about the physicality, the emotions, the, like, the physical our physical existence. We have to go beyond that when we're talking about walking in the spirit and walk according to uh, the spirit of God. The reality of that is of God. And he's talking about the spirit of God like you can't get no deeper than that or easier than that. And he's talking about the spirit. Walking according to the spirit and, mostly, and mainly talking about taking on the mentality of the spirit of God. That's what he's talking about. He says walk in the spirit. That's what he's talking about. Walk in the, ment the mentality of God. His spirit. Let that be what leads you instead of your carnal nature or your carnal impulse. You know what I'm saying? Because that leads to death. So, <clears throat> Romans chapter 2, sorry, Romans chapter 8 mm -hmm. and uh, verse 2, mm -hmm. he says, There is therefore, uh, and, you know, matter of fact, when you start Romans, starting Romans 7, he's talking about this contradiction <clears throat> that we have or this, this battle that we have between the flesh and the spirit. It's one of those chapters in Romans chapter 7 that people read and a lot of people can resonate. It resonates with a lot of people because they understand the battle between their desire and like what they may want to do. Their impulse and then their, their desire, what they may want to do. You may say, man, I want to be a good father. But like, I have mm -hmm. other stuff that get in the way that, that mm -hmm. trumps that sometimes. I, mean, I want to be a good husband. Mm -hmm. But like you always find yourself when a lady, when a lady walk by, you know what I'm saying? You oh, follow yeah. the tail. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah. don't want to see my wife cry. Mm -hmm. Like I'm getting tired. Of it. I want to be trustworthy. Mm -hmm. But every time the opportunity presents itself, you go and mm -hmm. get involved with awesome. stuff. Yeah. You be like, man, I don't want to be this person. Like a lot of people on drugs. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to be this. But then the drug calls and they, they oh, and they yeah. go. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so. That's you know so he, he deals with that in Romans seven he says um, uh, verse twenty four oh mm -hmm. and, and, and you know it's a great thing to read by yourself but he, he kind of summarizes it oh wretched man that I am mm -hmm. who shall deliver me from the body of this death you know what I'm saying and that's and that's kind of the, the back and forth that he's been talking about oh wretched who gonna save me you know what I'm saying he says I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so that with the mind I serve the law of God but with the flesh the law of sin so mm -hmm. <clears throat> the flesh has a desire for sin. But, but with his mind, he serves the law of God. Mm. His heart is set on godliness. Though there may be a desire in the flesh for other things, it's he has set his mind and been set on godliness, mm. the thing of God. You know what I'm saying? And so then he says, verse eight. I'm mean, saying chapter eight. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. He says, for the law of the spirit of life is Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And so, like, that that's powerful. <laughs> Once again, I've been saying it all day long. But, um, if we walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh, we were set free from the law of sin and death. Because the law of sin and death is simply, we, we talk about it all the time, the wages of sin is death, right? Yeah. Like, the law of sin and death is simply that, like, you if you sin, you die. The problem is that sin is addictive. Mm -hmm. And so once you taste sin, like anything else, mm -hmm. you go back. You're like a sweet tooth. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You crave. You know what I'm saying? Like you're addicted to it. Yeah. And it leads to death. That's mm -hmm. what it does. You know what I'm saying? Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. 
So he's wow. saying that the law of the spirit of, of, of life has let me set me free from the law of sin and death. Mm -hmm. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, uh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus has come and he says he has overcome uh, flesh mm -hmm. in the flesh. In other words, like he has shown the way how to overcome in the flesh. You see what I'm saying? And now because he has established that way, we know we now know the way if we follow. Mm -hmm. Like I said, so I mean, well, uh, That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, like, um, like, uh, so, like, so when Jesus says, "I'm the way to the truth and life," no man comes to the Father but by me, right? He said, "I, I have established the way. Mm -hmm. I have established the way to please God." Set an example. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. He has set mm -hmm. the example. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to please, be pleasing to God. You want to have mm -hmm. a good relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Then I have established the way to do that. Mm -hmm. Not only is it through His sacrifice. But it's through mm -hmm. his doctrine, his yeah, mind, his exactly, spirit. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you need to follow his spirit. You need to follow and be like mm -hmm. him. It's really an interesting thing because like Jesus is a real person. But then when we look at Jesus as something more, yeah. then we can't follow that example. It's really important that you understand when they say Jesus is, they call him son of man, right? Because he's, he's a real person. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, we sometimes when we say uh, he that believed that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, let me see. Uh, uh, oh, this thing is I have a connection. First um, John. First John chapter. First John chapter five. Uh, whosoever first, five, first John chapter 5 verse 1 whosoever believeth that Jesus is, is the Christ is born of God mm. everyone that loveth him that that begat mm. loveth him also that is begotten of him by this let's see uh, that's not what I want is that, that's not what I want um, we talked about he that believeth that Jesus Christ came in the flesh mm. yeah. Oh, it's verse, that's chapter 4, I'm sorry. 1 John chapter 4, uh, verse, chapter chapter 4, verse 1. He says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now... Uh, already is is it in the world and so he talks about uh, confessing Jesus Christ has come in the flesh mm -hmm. and you know when you think about that from just a purely physical thing how easy is the first person to say yes I believe Jesus Christ has come in the flesh but it's not just the physical it's not just the physical confession it is the, it is the acknowledgement mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ has come he Jesus Christ and his righteousness is real he was a real man and he overcame flesh. And he overcame sin in the flesh. Why is that important? Because that means you can do it. That means, that means I can do it. Because he's a man just like me. Just like you. And he overcame sin. That means. And so he's established the way. We just have to follow it. That's And that's critical. Because not only will that be your saving grace. That will also be your condemnation. Go ahead. It's, it's crazy because. It's crazy you say that because a lot of churches, especially, you know, my time of being out and stuff like that, I went to different churches and I've just experienced that a lot of people take that and they only take that and say, I confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that's it. But then Jesus set the actual example of one faith, one Lord, one baptism. Mm -hmm. right? Correct. So Correct. it's more or less, a lot of people are depending, are trying to make it easy on themselves 
and try to shorten the path. But mm. Jesus walked the long path. Mm. But a lot of people try to shorten that path and say, oh, I'm going to do it the easy way. Mm. But Jesus did it the hard way, so you got to do it the hard mm. way. That's solid. Life don't come. That's solid. Thank you, Pastor Joseph. Well, it's easy with Jesus if you do it the obedience. Life is going to be high either way. It's just mm -hmm. which one you going to choose. Yeah. That's right. Romans 8, verse 3, where our brother just read, he says, uh, For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin uh, in the flesh. And so this is a powerful verse because, um, you know, you're supposed to die because of sin. But, you know, Jesus Christ died. He was sinless. And so, because he was sinless, he was a perfect sacrifice mm -hmm. for our sins. And where it says condemn sin in the flesh, because he was sinless, sin was placed on him. It was condemned. It's like neutralized. And he became our sacrifice. And then now for us, we're able to become sons and daughters of God. Second Peter 1, 4 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the, lust, in the world through lust. And so when the Bible talks about as well, he's made us a new creature in Christ. We're, we've given a we've been given a different a power, uh, a different uh, a spirit from heaven that gives us His thoughts right from the scriptures. In Hebrews six four it says, "For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost." So we've been we've tasted of the heavenly gift. Uh, the world could read the Bible all they want, but without Tasting that heavenly gift mm. and that power that comes from being made a new creature. They can have a great memory of the scriptures, but there's not going to be a power that's going to be displayed when they describe mm. the truth. Yeah, I like it, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world mm. to come. It's powers of the world to come. And so, you know, when it comes to, you know, our brother's lesson, uh, what he's teaching, it's a great lesson. Um, we've been given a, a powerful spirit, which is comes from the Father and the Son. And all we have to do is, when we go through trials, as we read in James chapter 1, I'm going to say, count it. Uh, brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience, for that patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. See, the flesh... As his brother's mentioning, uh, it's gonna te you're gonna be tempted and tested as time goes on, but the spirit that's in you is gonna be there to remind you of the scriptures, and also remind you of the taste of the Holy Ghost, of how good He is. So as our brother mentioned in the lesson too this morning, mm -hmm. your your taste, you know what sin tastes like, uh, you know what the Holy Ghost tastes like. And now you have to, like our brother Makai said, you have to choose, decide. You want the good that comes mm -hmm. from God. You want that relationship to continue. You want his love to be connected with you. You want, you know, have fellowship with him. If you walk in the light, mm -hmm. you know, you have fellowship with him. Or do you want this sin, which is temporal, fleeting, and then it's going to disconnect the relationship. You know, it's going to change. It might change, alter your conscience uh, for good. You know, that thing called fentanyl. Uh, man, a lot of cases, one, one time of taking it, it just completely alters their thinking, you know, and our brother, that's a powerful drug, that it has that much power for, for it to one time just to alter, um, but when it comes to sin, sin could be the same way, it could, one sin is just, how much is that the man? So, I, I was looking at, okay, so, we have to operate and walk in our spiritual nature, right, in, in God's spiritual nature. Um, and so then, like, I look at First Corinthians chapter twelve. You know what I mean? Like, so how do we do that? How do we walk in the spirit? First Corinthians uh, chapter, I'm sorry, chapter two. Forgive me. First Corinthians chapter two, uh, starting in verse twelve. It says. Um, 
Um, we start at verse 9, it's fine. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no, knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. And so, uh, of the rip, like, He's saying that, the, that goes back to the point that Brother Albert was making. Mm -hmm. Like, the knowledge of God and its power is given to the children of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And as he said, I had not seen, ear, and not heard that things that God prepared for them that love him. Mm -hmm. Those of us that love him, as he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. As he said, those that love him are those that love him are those who keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. He says, but God revealed them unto us by his spirit. Those of us, us being those that do love him. Uh, contrary to the world. He said, the spirit searches of all things, yea, the deep things of God. Uh, what, what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit which is in him? So I always say that, we keep it real simple. Nobody know you like you. You know what I'm saying? Like you know yourself inside and out. Even the stuff that you try to hide for yourself, you know. You know your true intention when you do stuff. You see what I'm saying? Like, so he's saying, exactly. So no man knows a man, say the man, the spirit that's in him. Mm -hmm. You know yourself better than it's anybody else. It's about your right? actions as well. Correct. It comes down to actions. You know. Correct. He says, even so, the same way, the things of God know no man, say the spirit of God. So if you want to know God, you have to know mm -hmm. it's going to be through the spirit that you don't know God. You know what I mean? He says, now, verse 12, now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words with which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual does all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. He says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him? Or that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. And so, we're talking about walking in the spirit. You know what I mean? Like, it's... Like I said, it, it's about receiving the things of the spirit that are given to us freely from God. Those things being... Like I said, he says, he says, the natural man can't know these things. So you operate in your carnal impulse. And you try to make world and make, make sense of the world and, and, like, and operate through your carnal impulse, you cannot know the things of God. That's the reason why you have to be born again. You know what I'm saying? Because in your natural state, as Nick Demon says, mm -hmm. how can these things be? You mm -hmm. know, you can't understand this stuff from a physical perspective. But once again, like we talked about from the beginning, your physical state is not your real state. You know what I'm saying? If you're looking at things, exactly, if you're looking at things as it, as, as it relates to your flesh, you miss it. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is that all of us have a spirit inside. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing making the decisions. That's the stuff that's actually alive. Your fingers, your body, your 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 physical organs and stuff are only a tool utilized by the spirit to operate. Your brain is just a tool used to control this body, to enforce, or to 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 carry out the will of the spirit. That's the truth. That's reality. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so. So God teaches us all these things. To teach God teaches us the truth through His Spirit. Mm -hmm. The things that are that God gives us is through His Word. These things mm -hmm. are hidden wisdom that are spiritually discerned, mm -hmm. and they are given to our understanding of the Scripture is given to us by God through the Spirit. That's why you have to be born again and receive the Spirit in order to understand and receive the things of God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Once again, my baptism is necessary. Right? He says, the natural man can't know the things of God because they're foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. In verse 14. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. So, how you can tell a person, you can break down things in ways that people, like, yeah, well, you can, you explain life in a way that people, I say it like this. You ever, have, you ever talk to a person, not a member of the church, that's carnal. And, and I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily put me in the sense of carnal in this sense mm -hmm. as far as like they're evil 
or they have bad intentions, mm-hmm. but just that they are carnally minded. Yeah, carnally minded. Yeah, they the think, world. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They're thinking worldly. The materialistic possessions and yeah. you got it. They don't right. have to be evil, but they just cater to them things to, to the point where materialistic but possessions makes them feel good inside. Correct. And then after two or three months, the fire is gone. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we we set ourselves into this position to where if we get a brand new car, it makes us feel good. We get a bigger house that we want to impress our neighbors or we get big, fine cars to impress others. You know what I'm saying? That's really corner I understand what he's saying about corner You be corner mind as, as, as other things as well, but mostly of people with material possessions because they let they let material possessions dictate their lifestyle. Yeah. And that's the only way they're going to feel good is by them. The more and more that they get, the more and more that people get, it distracts you from God. Yeah. They're not seeing that, oh, I'm doing it by myself. I don't need God to get this and get that. They're missing the whole big picture. There's not really life. Life is not about material possessions. Because if you got a roof over your head, you got clothes on your back, you got food on the table, it doesn't matter what, what you have. As long as you have them tools to work with, like you see, if you don't work, you don't eat, right? So you have to have to lay a foundation. When you lay that foundation, you got to know what you want in life. You got to have consistency and persistence. And when you have them three and you see God first, everything else, and I'm not knocking nobody, you can have whatever you want to have. That's your business. But do not let that get in the way of your spirituality because you have to understand that we can't take it with us. Have you ever seen a new hall behind a hearse? No, you haven't. You have it. So you have to understand. You know what I'm you we have to understand what, what is life about. Life is not all about what job you have, how much money you got, how much you got in your pocket. It's not concerning that. And I'm not knocking people from working because if you don't work, you don't eat. But we have to follow Christ. And we have to understand is that once we get them there, we can't cherish them things like it's going to be, oh, I got this, I got this. And people have to understand is that when it comes to spirituality, just like your father said, when it comes to the soul and then to the physical presence, really, or that we see each other now, mm-hmm. all that's gonna be it's gonna be over with. Once you die and leave, all the stuff that we're going through, politics, what you got, what you have, all this stuff is irrelevant. It's what you do on here on this earth, which when you serve God. It's like a it's like a savings account. You know what I'm saying? You start building up your spiritual out the account. So then when you die, you be able to spend all that spend that spiritual money that you got. You know what I'm saying? But we have to come yeah, we got to understand is that college, forty five, all this stuff, that's what you desire, you know, that you want to do. Because God gives us a desire of heart to do with it. This is a free free world. We do whatever, but as long as you put him first and see God first, and, if, and even though we do go through our trials and tribulations, it's going, it's going to be trials in our life. Even though you are being young, man, you got your father and mother to lean back on, and they're trying to show you the way of how the world is, because they're not going to be here all your life. You know what I'm saying? Brother Javier, good preacher. I met him at the mall. You know what I'm saying? Met him at the mall. Brought him in. Now look at where he's at. He's a preacher now. And he's preaching all over now. Very good preacher. You know what I'm saying? So we have to understand is that it amazes me because when I brought this man in, it shocked me because I'm like, wow, he's a preacher now. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it amazes me. And people don't understand when you do read the Bible, it makes sense. And I don't see how people can't see this. It's real. He's a prime example. The spirit of me, he, God led him. I would never think I would talk to this man at the ball of Barnes and Noble. Now look what his life went. Went to college, got a college degree, changed himself. Look at him. Yeah. Say, look at you too, bro, brother. I'm a faithful example as well. You know, um, look at uh, Proverbs 28. Verse 5, just piggybacking on Brother Hamilton too, is uh, evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Yeah, just piggybacking on from 1 Corinthians 
uh, Second Corinthians, First Corinthians two fourteen. It says that they that seek the Lord understand all things, but evil men don't understand judgment. They don't know how to judge things, um, because their heart is in darkness, right? And the, the light, which is the Holy Spirit, you know, Jesus told uh, some of the saints in, in Revelation. He says, "Repent, or I'll move my remove my candlestick, so you won't be able to see." And so the darkness is what God wants us to remove. And those that seek the Lord, because we seek how He, how He, who He is, how His love is, His mercy is, how He judges, what He thinks is right and wrong. And every time God has been right, every single time, you know, and how He judges every single time He's been right. So because He's been right. 100% of the time, mm. then we get that information from him, and that's how we understand things. But, you know, there's j jails full of people because they saw, well, I think this sin is right. I think I should steal this car. I should, oh, my wife cheated on me. Maybe I should murder her, throw her body in a ditch. Nobody will find it, you know. Or maybe I should sell this drug it's just from Texas to, you know, to Louisiana, just a quick, quick, uh, few hour drive, and I'll make a couple grand, and then, beep, beep, and then now he's, you know, doing five to five to twenty-five in, in jail, and so, you know, when it comes to hell, hell is full of people, you know, that die in their sins. Where am you cannot come, because when on earth, as Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets let them hear them. They didn't hear and seek the voice of God. Therefore, they reap what they sow. And we want to reap uh, eternal reward, but we have to watch our steps that they be led by the Lord. So to piggy to kind of piggyback off that, um, I have John. I have John sixteen verse thirteen. Uh, Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of Truth, is to is come, he will guide you uh, into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. I just want to piggyback the scripture off of what he said, and basically, you know, you know, the Spirit, you know. Amen. Stay in the spirit. Excellent, excellent. That's that's exactly right. that. That kind of, and picky back once again. You know, and come right back around with the same thought. Like, but but he that is spiritual judges all things. That he himself is judging no man. And I was just, just like Brother Craig had just displayed it. You know what I mean? When you talk about judgment, judgment just is another word for measure. How you measure a thing, right? Being perfectly measured and measure just has to do with balance. Making sure that your judgment or your the way you call it or you see it is balanced. You see what I'm saying? That's what God gives us. And, and like, he gives us, uh, so that's what I'm saying. So we judge all things. We know how to measure everything. The world is out of whack. They're out of balance. So like, a part, like you said, a person may be like, man, he thinks his, his whole life is about acquiring goods. He's out of balance. And you see the debt, you see the effects in your life if you live like that. Like, it's not like, so it's like I'm saying, the stuff that God is saying is not just good because we believe it's good. I've said that before. It's good because it no. is good. It is right in everybody's life. You see what I'm saying? And if they live it, you, you will see it. And, and if they live opposite, they will see the effects. If a cat is like, people be celebrities, they live, they have all this money, all this stuff, and they still be committing suicide. Why? Because that stuff don't bring you peace. It does not bring you joy. You know what I mean? If you, like, so... What God is, that's what I'm saying. So, 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 well, you know, uh, I was gonna say, yeah, uh, I remember a scripture that said, um, God gives you uh, a peace that you know the world uh doesn't give you, mm -hmm. so you know, all that, all the carnal minded stuff and all the mm -hmm. you know, material things won't give you uh, the peace that God will give you, wow. you know. So, what's so, so when he says, so when he says. He that he mm -hmm. that is spirit judges all things, yet he himself is judged no man. Mm -hmm. They can't they can't overcome or overthrow the judgment that God has taught you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can say, I own a business. I do work. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make this money. Just like anybody else has a job. Yeah. They're trying to make money, they're trying to yeah. build. But I understand the limits to that. I understand I'm not doing this mm -hmm. with the pursuit that my life is all about acquiring. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this because I live on the earth, and I think this is the best way to go about to make income for myself. Because mm -hmm. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta work. God said you gotta work to eat, mm -hmm. so that's why I have a job. That's mm -hmm. why I'm doing what I'm doing. I think mm -hmm. this is the best way to do it. I'm using wisdom that God has taught me how to prosper in this world. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so 
a person may try to tell you, well, shoot, you out here trying, you out here trying to have a business too. You want to be, you want to be rich too. You drive a nice car too. But I understand the limits. I don't put my trust in these things. Not about being rich. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You, you, you married too. You won't do it. like a person will try to judge you uh, according to their uh, carnal lens, uh, <laughs> but they're out of balance. Yeah. You yeah. judge. We judge yeah. all things because God has taught us how to judge mm -hmm. through His Spirit. Yeah. God, God has given us all instructions. God has given us instructions and insight on everything yeah. on the earth. All we gotta do is believe it, and God has made us wise through His Spirit. That's why He says it's hidden wisdom. It, you, and you can't just get it by picking up the Bible. People pick up the Bible and read, and you can read, and I'll, you're going your way. You can read the words. The mm -hmm. words mean something, right? So if you just go and put get a dictionary and look up what the word baptized means, what the word wisdom means, what testimony means, you'll you understand physically what that word means. Mm -hmm. But being able to put it together, understand what it means spiritually, you cannot find because you're not a part of it. You see what I'm saying? It's spiritually discerned. It is, it is freely given to us by the Spirit, and if you're not if if you're not one of His, that's what Romans eight talks about. He that does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is none of His, right? If you don't have the Spirit, if you have received it through obedience, then you cannot understand these things. You can understand the physical Juju. words, Juju. but you cannot understand the measure, no. and that's where the power Juju. is Juju. in understanding the measure, Juju. how to Juju. judge, how to. Because that's what the Bible says: we Juju. judge all Juju. things. Or, or, uh, don't you, as the Bible says in chapter in chapter five, don't you know that we that, that we would judge the world? You know what I'm saying? How? By our life, by the way we live. You know what I'm saying? You won't, you won't, you're gonna you're gonna show that God's way is good and it's possible to live this way. He did it. And by that, God gonna point to your life, our life, his life, and say if he was able to do it, and then and above all else, he's gonna point to Jesus' his son's life. Because all of, all we know is following, walking as he walked. Jesus is the way. He was a man of flesh, just like you. He was afraid like you. He felt pain like you. All that. But he did what was right. Mm -hmm. And his example will condemn us all. Yeah. It also saves us all. If we believe it and we mm -hmm. follow it. No, Isn't it? Because he is a man of flesh, just like you. He see a woman. He, we, we all been in here. And I, I'm saying it only because I'm keeping it real. Right? Like, he wake up in the morning. And he's just yeah. like other cats are. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he see somebody and it can be exciting to oh, him. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he see a woman and he see her body moving oh. 3D and like, he can see that that is attractive. Mm -hmm. But he don't go and fornicate. Or lust. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And, 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 and that, that's, the, that's the point that I'm making. So, he, he go, I'm showing it like, because that's what I'm saying. He came in the flesh. He, he, he Jesus Christ, we come, Jesus Christ came in the flesh. You, you, you have to understand. He was tempted, but he did not sin. He, th he had the same feelings that you have. He chose to do what was right. That's it. So it's not that he just always. Well, it's different for Jesus because he didn't, he didn't have like sexual desire. That's that's not true. He was tempted in all areas. You see what I'm saying? But he didn't sin. He chose to do what was right. All of us have the choice. To choose. Mm -hmm. When you sin, God has made a provision for sin because of His grace and His mercy. But don't make, don't ever, never be mistaken. You choose to sin every time. Yeah, you, do. you make that choice. You make that choice. Yeah. Uh, uh, you had something? Um, I just, I just had a quick scripture. Uh, oh, we gonna, I'm gonna wrap it. We're gonna wrap it. Okay, I, I just want to read uh, Second Samuel. Second Samuel twenty two uh, thirty three. Second Samuel twenty two thirty three, uh, and it says, uh, "God is my strength and power, and He make it uh, my way perfect." And I was talking to I was talking to somebody at one point, and he was telling me, you know, um, he was just telling. Well, I remember something stuck out, and he was saying, um, "Perfect." Perfect practice makes perfect, mm -hmm. and you know what I correlated that to in my head was perfect practice is worshiping the one that is perfect, you mm -hmm. know. So that's that's Jesus. So following His mm -hmm. way and being obedient to His example and the laws that He's teach, mm -hmm. and you know, in, in the name of His Father, you know, that's perfect practice. So you know, perfect practice makes perfect, meaning that you know, practicing the way that Jesus lived His mm -hmm. life is will make you perfect as well. Amen. So yeah, that is exactly. Yeah, like they say, nothing changes, nothing changes, man. You know, nothing changes, nothing changes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we go to uh, we go to.
to uh, Ecclesiastes 10.19. And uh, it says, The feast is made for laughter and wine making merry, but money answers all things. Money do answer all things, you know. But we have to realize that <clears throat> money's not going to buy your way in heaven either. You know what I'm saying? Just a tool for us to get what we need. Of course, a lot of people won't want to. We let want to distract them from the spiritual blessings that he gives us. But we have to understand is that money, is like I said, is a tool. How much money do you really need when you really look at it? How much is it to make you comfortable, you know, and maybe happier sometimes? But you know, sometimes money can't bring happiness. But what is what is the, what is the enough money that you need to be comfortable and and and, and live without without wanting? You know, you know what I'm saying. But a lot of people want a lot of money because they do think money is going to buy put them in heaven. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But it, it can't put you in a much comfortable position. You know what I'm saying? But when you look at reality it. by itself, somebody really dropped it. When you when you look at reality, when it comes to money, it's only a piece of paper with green ink that's made out of cotton and lint. Dropped it. Somebody dropped it. But people kill over it. Yeah, yeah. And when you put pull your money out, it's like, why? Why are people having killing people over ink, and why are people working 13, 15 hours a day just to make money? Somebody just to make money. Somebody just to make money, just to live lavishly. Somebody drop something. But don't know the word of God. So we have to understand is that money is not worthless. It's just something that's a tool. So if I give you a billion, if I give your father a billion dollars to live on an island, what, who is he going to give it to? Who is he going to spend it with? He's just going to have a billion dollars sitting up in a room not spending Somebody it. So they got to tell you that money can't buy Somebody happiness. Money can't buy love. They still be depressed. Yeah, they can't still peace. be depressed and can't buy peace. So that goes money. to show you. I say money can bring more, shoot more problems. Yeah, <laughs> and it can bring them more money, more problems. Yeah, baby, baby. Okay. God bless you. Where's somebody drop phone at? Do you say David? You know, you say David. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, when, oh, oh, when it comes to when it comes to what Paul mentioned. You know, when he was writing to, I believe it was uh, Timothy. When it comes to, uh, yeah, First Timothy. Chapter number 6, verse 8. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. You know, when it comes to, uh, Psalms also says, uh, concerning riches, if they increase, don't set your heart on them. And um, so don't put them first. So we use the funds as well in the Bible for Philip received funds for the Philippians, uh, for the Grecian widows in Acts 6, uh, for the Jews in Acts chapter 11. So money is, like he mentioned, is a tool, is used, is to be used for. So, but it also shows your heart too. You know, the abundance of the funds will show what's in your heart if you get so much or if you get so little. Uh, but. God bless you, brother. Judges 16, uh, verse 19. And she made him sleep upon her knees. She called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. She began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he woke up out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before, shake myself. He was not that the Lord was departed from him. So, as our brother Hamilton was mentioning, he said, I I'm going to go out just like before. So I got the same strength. He didn't pay attention to His hair was gone. The Lord departed from him. That's where his strength was at. And so, when it comes to temptation, uh, trials, you know, you may have that same mindset. I'm going to just go out before. It's going to happen again. Victory. All right? But then, you're overtaken. Because the Lord depart, departed from you because you gave hit, as, as James talks about, the deceitfulness of sin. It, it, you conceive and then you bear the baby. And so when it comes to uh, what our brother was mentioning, uh, if you have done it before, if you overcome a temptation before, that's a blessing. You did it for the strength of God. But tomorrow is the next day that wasn't yesterday. 
right? Tomorrow is not yesterday. So now you got to re reevaluate where your mind is at now because it could change from one day to the next, one month to the next. You either can get weaker or stronger. And he didn't recognize his strength was taken from him. He just woke up. For some reason, he was always on her knees. You know, he's always take, he was napping. But he wasn't supposed to be with the, the woman anyways. She was a harlot. Um, so now he got overtaken. They took out his eyeballs. You know, from, you know, I'd rather somebody take out my hand or foot and my eyeballs. I want to see what's going on, you know. But they took out his eyeballs. And then he ended up, you know, glorifying God in the end. But at the same time, his life didn't have to be this way. You know, yeah. he didn't have to end that way. Mm. And so when it comes to when it comes to our ways, our mm. footsteps, it's needful for us to ask God, guide me this day, guide my footsteps in this situation. Give me wisdom so that I, I overcome whatever may be before me. Because he knows the future. He knows every personality in the world. The Bible shows the personalities that are alive today. And pray that he lead us in every spiritual fight. You know, conversation that he may get the glory and that he may got so Amen. Uh, real fast, last two scriptures, just so I can wrap up the like the lesson. Mm. First first John chapter two. So 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 the the, the, the the thought process that I had put together here was we ought to operate in our spiritual nature. In order to do that we must have the mind of Christ. First Corinthians chapter two, let me just read. Yeah. And then to have the mind of Christ we have to walk as he walked. First John mm. chapter two uh, verse three through six. Verse six says, "He that said he abided in him ought him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked." You know what I mean? So like, if we say we abide in Christ, we say we have a relationship with Christ. We say we love Christ. We have to walk as he walked. We have to keep his commandments. If if you don't, you're a liar. You know what I'm saying? Like point blank period. But you get to choose. That's 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 the thing that's so important. You know what I mean? So then, how did he walk? If we walked as he walked, how did how did Jesus walk? And I'm looking at Luke chapter two, and then we be done. Luke chapter two, Matthew Matthew six thirty three. Y'all are familiar with that scripture. Seek the kingdom first, and everything else will be added unto you. Seek the kingdom first, and righteousness first, and everything else will be added unto you. We just talked about that multiple already. Uh, but Luke chapter two, uh, Luke chapter two, verse forty three through fifty. Uh, he says. And when they had fulfilled the days and they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his father knew not of him, knew not of it. But they, this is he's a young, he's a, he's a, he's a young, uh, young a child. But they supposing him, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. So they about to leave the, they about to leave Jerusalem, and then they all traveling together. So they like they look for him, they can find him. But they thought, well, maybe he was riding with one of the other family members or something like that, one of the other people. Gonna be cool. The family reunion, everybody driving to the same place. We <laughs> stopped to get something to eat, and then it's like, okay, well, maybe he riding with someone. Mm, you see what I'm saying? Man. Exactly. We ain't tripping. We all going to the same place. Mm -hmm. It's not me and tripping. Uh, so they they go a day's journey, and then they look for him with the, with other people, and they're like, nah, he's not with us. And like, oh man. Right? And so when they had, and when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking for him. So they had to go mm -hmm. back to Jerusalem. They say, like, we left him by. We gotta go find him. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. This is a young boy been by himself for three days. Keep, keep track. And, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrow. He's like, well, then they found it like, boy, where you been? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you got, you know, why you do this? You got mm -hmm. us out here all, you know, all sad and twisted all up, looking for you. His response, and he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wish, wish ye not, or know you not that I must be about my father's business? That was his thought. That's how he walked. Mm -hmm. That's how Jesus walked in his life. Anything and everything he did, he thought about. How does God want me? To, how does my father want me to conduct myself in this? And that, and this, and that. That's how Jesus walked on the earth. He says, my doctrine not my own, but him that sent me. It's not my will, but my Father, which is in heaven, that sent me. That's his thought process. And that's how we should walk in the earth. That don't mean that because we are, we walk as Jesus walked, we, we always uh, spiritually minded, that we don't live on the earth. Brother Javier made the perfect, 
the point. I thought, I mean, I, I, it took it right out of my mouth. The saints take up money, and we use money every day. You know what I'm saying? Every first day of the week, we take up money. Because money does have a purpose. It does have a, it's a tool to be used. You see what I'm saying? So there's not, money is not evil. The pursuit of money is not, is not a problem. Mm -hmm. It's that it's when you, money. When mm -hmm. you it's love money, money. Yeah. that's the problem. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm that's saying? Money, money is an evil. And so, so being a Christian doesn't mean that like, I, I have to be poor. Mm -hmm. I have to just, all, if, I, if I only think about God's will, mm -hmm. that means that I just walk around and like, mm -hmm. only you know, pray and then like wear a mm -hmm. robe. You know what I'm saying? Let my hair grow out and I preach all day mm -hmm. long in all the corners of the city. That's what it means. That's what it means. If I walk like Jesus, that's what I have to do. No. Yeah. It just means that you keep God first in everything you that you do. That's yeah. it. You're right about that. That's it. You're right. You're yeah. right. You keep God first in everything you do. And how can I say it? You, you don't run yourself into the ground just to get money. Yeah. You got to have You got to have your purpose. You got to know what you want money for. Amen. You know what I'm saying? You just don't go out there just get money so you make money and don't know what you need to do with it. Some people just work, 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 and just go out here and buy, 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 and consume so much to where they live with death. The Bible calls like the brother luxurious. preached earlier, mm -hmm. by fear, then guess what? When you work so hard, and you buy all these cars and these houses, you, won't find you get it. somewhere to death, your spiritual ass all balanced out, then guess what? When the job call you in and say, hey, we're going to have to let you go. Mm. You work 13 hours a day. You put all this effort into buying things just to impress other people. And all of a sudden, I come in and say, hey, we're going to have to lay you off. And then that's when fear attack kick in. Oh, I got all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Lord, what am I going to do? Now, number one, you're not coming to church. You're not praying. Then all of a sudden, the walls start caving in. The devil said, I got you now. Mm -hmm. Then you come oh, in. Then you come in and you be at the house thinking, I can't get no peace. I'm laying down. I'm looking at the ceilings. Lord, what am I going to do now? Now all of a sudden, you can't get no sleep at night. And then you like, Lord, have mercy. We go buy all your money going. Don't have no savings account because you just gave it to the banks. Now all of a sudden, you kick in. Your boy that you didn't have seen in a long time call you, hey man, uh, what's up, man? I oh, mean, I lost my job. He said, I got something for you, homie. I got something for you. He said, won't you take these keys out to California for me? I give you 40000 And you started thinking, well, I got all this stuff, Lord. I got all this stuff. What am I going to do? So all of a sudden, you call me back, hey, homie. Hey, homie. I got, I, I, I think I can do that. Okay, then. And you will as you roll down your car, roll across the state line, four keys. You think about that 40,000, what you gonna do with that 40,000? Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, Here you is, you're nervous, you're scared, he already looking at you. Yeah, you Can I check your car? <laughs> Can I check your car? No, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And all of a sudden, you free, you say, look, it's over with. Now you cross the state line, your pants over here in Texas. Mm. Now they finna give you 40 years. And wow. listen. You know what I'm saying? Dude, that's what happens out. like that all the time. Oh, yeah. Then now you get 40, 30 years in prison. <laughs> now you mad at God. Mad, mad at the world because of what you did. You Sometimes, man, you be, people better be careful what they do. Don't consume all these things. And God gives us wisdom and knowledge to not do it. But people get ahead of themselves. Sometimes we got to let God control us. Mm, you don't let God time. control you, and you try to control time. yourself, it, it's always turn out at the end. I yeah. guarantee you. Yes, it, it never does. fails. Yeah. Just a okay. scripture, a script, just one more scripture to, to, to piggyback off what you said when you was talking about the devil. He was saying um, in Revelation 2.10, it says, do not fear any, any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that mm -hmm. you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. So like, you know, money and things of that sort, that could all be a test that's thrown by Satan. You know, like mm -hmm. how, how are you going to deal with that money? 
like, you know, because, you know, God may, you know, God may bless you with riches and things of that sort. But then that's when the testings come in, like how Jesus, how, how Jesus was tempted on the mountain, mm. like turn his bread into turn his stone into bread, kind of like that. You, you rich. So, you know, buy this whore or, you know, what I'm saying yeah. buy this. Buy, you know, buy this car and, you know what I'm saying, pick up 10 women in it and then spend your money on them too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like all this other, all these temptations that come with money, that's going to, that's the devil trying to tempt you oh, yeah. through God's blessings. So, you know what I'm saying? That's why I use that scripture. You know, you got to mm. really trust God and make sure that you, while you're being tested, mm. you know what I'm saying? You yeah, trust the teacher, wise. you know what I'm saying? You trust the one that knows the answers, mm. you know what I'm saying? To the test. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So don't be blind. It's a cheat code. It's literally a cheat code. Like, like, Brother, I've been preaching about that last Sunday about that. It's in the text. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to listen to prayer? Yeah. Huh? You want to listen to prayer?